Hello everyone, we are going to discuss um, neosporosis. So we are also going to know the morphology of Neospora caninum as well as its etiology, its risk factors, life cycle and transmission in different animals, also its pathogenesis, the clinical diseases of Neospora caninum in cattle and dog, also the treatment and of course its prevention and control. So, neosporosis is caused by the microscopic one-celled protozoan parasite. So, in a healthy dog, contracting neosporosis may not have any symptoms and your dog may just be a carrier of the parasite. So, the illness is usually seen in puppies who contract the neosporosis from their mother. It is first recognized in dogs in 1984 in Norway and defined as a new genus and species, Neuspora caninum. It is structurally and biologically similar to Toxoplasma gondii, and until 1988, it was commonly misdiagnosed as such. So, Neuspora caninum is one of the most common causes of bovine abortion, especially in intensively uh, farmed cows. So this is the morphology of Neospora caninum. It belongs to the family Cercocystidae and it is a oocyst with small subspherical smooth coat and no polar cap. It is a single embryo when passed or unsporulated and will sporulate for about 1 to 3 days after. So the sporulate oocyst contains two sporocysts with four sporozoites each and has eight sporozoites in total. So dogs, dogs are the definitive host of Neospora caninone and are capable of shedding oocyst in feces after eating tissues of infected animals. So, it has a heteroxenous life cycle with a sexually reproductive stage occurring in the intestine of a definitive host. So, after ingestion of an oocyst, motile and rapidly dividing trachezoids are released. These trachezoids disseminate throughout the host and in response to the host immune response, differentiate into bradyzoids which form cysts in muscle and tissue. The formation of these cysts um, results in chronic infection of the intermediate host. So the ingestion of infected intermediate host tissue by the definitive host completes the life cycle of this omnispora caninum. So a second route of transmission is the congenital transmission from mother to offspring. So in cattle, Neospora caninum can be transmitted transplacentally from an infected cow to the developing fetus, an event that may occur in multiple pregnancies of the same cow because uh, most congenital infections are subclinical Congenitally infected heifer calves may be retained and added to the breeding herd and in turn may pass infections transplacentally to their own offspring. So its pathogenesis is that the organism has a predilec predilection for fetal chorionic epithelium and fetal placental blood vessels producing a fetal vasculitis and inflammation and degeneration of the chorioallantois and widespread necrosis in the placentum. The tachyzoids penetrate host cells and are located in a parasitophorous vacuole, so they can be found in macrophages, monocytes, vascular endothelial cells, fibroblasts, hepatocytes, renal tubular cells, and in the brain of uh, the infected animals. And cell death is by the active uh, multiplication of tachyzoids. So the clinical disease in dogs is that 
The signs are more severe in young and immunocompromised. It shows weakness, particularly in neck, um, in coordination and difficulty in swallowing. And it also um, shows neurological signs, especially in congenitally infected pop cyst in central nervous system. The neuromuscular degeneration is also observed in hind limb paral or hind limb paralysis. In adult dogs, it may develop um, skin lesions or pneumonia. So in puppies, the litter mates dying with signs of polyradiculitis or the inflammation of the nerve roots, especially of the hind limbs. So the puppy with signs of paralysis of the rear limbs at 3 to 8 weeks of age or and then ascending paralysis is also shown. Um, puppy with flaccid hind limbs paresis. So one of the clinical disease in cattle is abortions with 10 to 20 percent of abortions caused by Neospora caninum. The abortions usually occur with first post-infection pregnancy, autolysis of fetus, and later pregnancies usually go to term, but calves are infected. So in transgenerational infections, the seropositive calves give birth to seropositive calves, so it is without reinfection via sporocyst ingestion. And the lower the milk production, the lower the weight gain. So what are the prevention and control of neosporosis? In dogs, there is no vaccines that prevent disease in dog, uh, prevent this disease. Um, also, you need to avoid feeding your dogs um, with raw meat. Also, avoid access to aborted bovine fetal materials. Cease breeding from infected dams, transplacental root. Also introduce serological monitoring program in pups. Um, the dead stock offal from home slaughter and placentals should be discarded, discarded in a manner that prevents ingestion by dogs to reduce the risk that dogs will become infected and shed Neospora oocyst on the farm. In cattle, bulk milk testing or monitoring seroprevalence in lactating cows, um, prevention of transmission from dogs and other potential definitive hosts, um, transfer, transfer of embryos from infected dams into Uninfected recipients can prevent endogenous transpla transplacental transmission of Neospora caninum. Quarantine and testing of replacement and per uh, purchased cattle. And Bovilis New Guard, it is a commercially developed vaccine that contains to kill the Neospora trachezoids and apply to a healthy pregnant cow cows during the first trimester.